Chapter 3, Slackers and Truth Seekers. When he got back to his house, Dixie forgot everything he was pondering, and he could hear Chili Sue upstairs humming. He tossed his sweater towards the couch and headed up the 11 stairs to the second floor. On his way down the hall towards his room, he kicked off his shoes one at a time. They landed haphazardly in front of his door. He gave them one last kick and stepped into his bedroom. Chili Sue was there, sitting on the floor, reading a comic book. Was that you that left the door open? He asked her. Then he got quite solemn. I'm sorry. They didn't have the game. He took a deep breath and closed his eyes. Still, you're late. They closed before you got there. I knew it, she said back to him without looking up. Yeah, the game, Dixie apologized gloomily. She knew him too well. Actually, that's exactly what happened. He sat himself on the floor nearby and started rummaging through his toy chest. I just didn't want to deal with one more disappointing thing today. It's your stupid hours on Monday. He looked out the window and sighed. It's just as well. I can't afford blowing coins on that stuff right now anyway. As he started dumping a barrel of toy blocks, Dixie did appear to be somewhat disoriented. I don't think I'm feeling well, he said after a while. Well, what? Chili asked him. She looked up and checked his face. He didn't look sick, but it appeared like he was trying hard to hide something. No, nothing right now, he insisted. Nothing you want to talk about? She insisted right back. Nah, it's no big deal. Chili studied her friend while he grabbed the box of his Lejo toys, low-budget replacements that Dixie had been able to buy in bulk. She wondered what was really bothering him. Dixie blamed it on the weather. Come on, man, she said after a bit. I hear, I hear, I hear what you're saying. It's just she was about to say something that would have made Dixie's dad proud, but she shook her head and let him continue. As he set up his toys, Dixie kept talking something about how he felt there was a strange collective premonition in the air. It was an interesting theory because, in an almost palpable way, Chili swore she had felt something herself. There certainly seemed to be an extra amount of static electricity in the air that made it hard for everyone to comb their hair at least for the last three days. The outdoor sounds of traffic could be heard as Chili started to muse a little what might have been going on anyway. <laughs> You know, you're starting to sound like Mike Babayan, Chili told her friend. Dixie smiled as he set up a ramp of his legos. Their friend Mike loved discussing geopolitical problems and strange paranormal reports of events flaring up in the news, even if they always seem to be getting everybody down. Yeah, the boring realms where we live do an amazing job of making people look the other way, Dixie admitted. He's right, don't you think? Reenacting everyone to continue their daily grind as if nothing's wrong. Come on, I feel like it's not just the weather or current events that's bugging you, said Chili. Same old bad news, Dixie dismissed her. I've learned to not trust it. News is unreliable anyway, Dixie smirked to himself. Exact same things as Uncle Kurt would say to him ever since he was little. But when was it ever not unreliable? Dixie's mind started to wander a bit to fruitless places. Chili could tell because he'd always make that odd face like he was scraping the tip of his tongue before he'd drop a bombshell. You know, lately I've been getting really annoyed about how stupid Can Cankerville is, Dixie told her. Chili slapped her forehead, for she had already heard this many times and knew what he was getting at. Oh, yeah, sure. Everything looks stable in everyday life around Can Cankerville, but he still felt dissatisfied. Like a lot of kids his age, life seemed neither good nor bad. It just, meh. Still, no matter what Dixie could do, he didn't have the means to move anywhere right now, and neither did Chili. Taking a deep breath, Dixie looked at the toy playsets all over his floor and relaxed while Chili Sue planted herself on the bed and glanced through her comic book. After a few moments, she diligently reached into her school bag and pulled out an algebra book while Dixie started setting up a playset for his toy car collection. I can't relax these days, Dixie continued. I mean, even at the checkout line when I'm buying a sandwich. Could be a lot worse, Chili reminded him. They'd just been treated to another one of Dixie's parents' stories concerning how bad everybody really had it during the second flood, unlike now. Stupid second flood, Dixie noted. 
Always the perfect excuse to shut everyone in his generation up. Second flood. That old pandemic some years back that had railroaded much of the known world. Thanks to it, the world now was just barely recovering into a world of some restoration, some resolution. But in many countries, too many scandals, forced vaccinations, and bad politics had soured things so bad until AI took over as everything had become way too much of a ruckus. Dixie's lack of attention span snapped them both out of thinking about this anymore. All I'm saying, he continued, is a woman came up to me today and told me how screwed we are if we don't keep cash. Chili nodded sympathetically. She could certainly relate to the increasing encounters with strangers losing their cool everywhere. I didn't ask for the conversation, Dixie continued. Then she went on to remind me how her currency has no value anyway. Something about how it's not backed by gold standard and how working hard's pointless. She's right. But it's so depressing. Well, good thing you got an easy job doing deliveries at Bonehead's Pizza, she smiled. Yeah, now move to 3 p.m. shift, Dixie scoffed uneasily. He gave her a sidelong look as he set up another ramp. I should just quit my job at any rate. Lately, Dixie enjoyed creating monstrous traffic jams with his Lejo playsets. He would pretend one motorist would get road rage and start slamming into everyone else's car and start taking them out. This is one of the few things that did annoy Chili about her friend. It would have been cute if he was younger, but she was 25 and Dixie here was 26, and they were taking classes at a community college. Everybody had tried so hard to get back to normal, and normal still didn't seem to make sense to him. You know, both of my uncles would always talk about the same time of the second flood, Dixie continued. They'd always hope for at least this thing would, I don't know, have made people think, I guess, you know? Think, Chili pondered moodily to herself. He was scraping the tip of his tongue again, and she knew what he was getting at. You know, no matter how you spin it, Dixie, your folks aren't backing this up. Yeah, it was too bad society didn't embrace them living like this for too much longer. It had become apparent that society's mores, and most of his friends, could no longer excuse Dixie for acting more like a slacker than anything else. Actually... Chili was one of the few that took his recent philosophical rants more seriously these days. And although she liked this new existential side of Dixie, she hated thinking she might be enabling him. Why do you play with toys, she asked him. She already knew the answer. Hey, this is cheaper therapy than other things, Dixie insisted as he continued playing with his toys. Uh-huh. Chili suit lay sprawled out in the middle of Dixie's unmade bed. Dressed in ripped jeans and a crop tee, her lanky build let her wear whatever she wanted. Chili was casually cool. Not cool in a typical, I don't care about the system and got it figured it all out, pretentious sort of way. But she possessed a unique combination of cogent self-awareness, confidence, and brilliant intuition that occasionally radiated out of her. And although these traits appeared to remain dormant inside of her most of the time, Dixie always felt safe around his friend. And couldn't help but admire her for that. She was definitely more stylish than Dixie. Laying on the bed, she reached out her long arms, extending Dixie the open algebra textbook in her hands. Oh. Oops! Dixie gulped and blushed. He had forgotten her standing study date. That's really why she was here. I guess my bad. Still, come on, we got time. Chili Sue groaned and rolled onto her stomach. Her long, reddish-brown hair and two uneven pigtails cascaded down on her shoulders. Dixie didn't want to think about the test they had coming up. Instead... He got out his blocks and constructed several more buildings for his play city. His other favorite game was pretending he was a giant monster rampaging through the city. What a nut bar you are, said Chili. She watched him stomp around his room and destroy the toy structures he had made. Chili and Dixie had grown up together. Granted, he was kind of nuts, but Chili admired his thoughtfulness and loved to bounce ideas off his inquisitive mind. As soon as the town was destroyed, Chili Sue saw her opportunity. All right, you're not going to study, I get it. Your mind's not there right now. What about a movie, at least? Movie? You know, if you think about it, that's even lazier, Dixie reasoned. You're just sitting there, pretending and physically not doing anything. Come on, at least think of me. What's wrong with the comics, Dixie protested. I agree with your parents, Chili replied. Don't get me wrong. I love watching my friends destroy imaginary buildings. But you know, we're not six years old, right? Look, playing with toys is much healthier than lying on a couch all night and binge-watching like you do, Dixie said. 
you already know this. A, you're moving around in second. It stimulates synapses in the brain for creativity much better than a film. Chili Sue groaned loudly and slid her body off the bed, melting in a pool on the floor. You're never going to get a date, she grinned at the wall and sat up. Usually, that would jar him, but today he didn't even seem to care at all. She'd almost envied him. Realizing that Dixie was in his own world, Chili grabbed another comic. After a few minutes, though, out of the blue, he shared something else she wasn't expecting. So last night I decided to go down to Maine South and watch the world go by, he started. Maine South? She asked him. Why would you go there? I don't know, Dixie stammered. For inspiration, I guess, you know? Couldn't have been that inspiring. Half my gigs are over there, she explained. Yeah, I, I know, I know, he said to her. And as I sat there, though, I realized everything I saw around me doesn't inspire me. But yeah, you were at Maine South, cried Chili. What did you expect? Well, I mean, yeah, police, arrests, drug deals, loitering. Dixie went on as if preparing for some slightly rehearsed banter. Complaints and police sirens that don't stop. I just figured a walk would cheer me up. Chili threw her hands up in the air. Well, you have been kind of grim lately, she admitted. As she stared at the tennis ball lying nearby, she waited for him to expand on what he was really feeling. Although knowing him, it was probably going to be way too heavy-handed or way too stupid or both. I want to ask what's really on your mind, but I'm afraid we're just going to make ourselves depressed, she considered. Dixie laughed. Yeah, you sure you want to hear this, he warned her. When she heard it, she wasn't surprised at all. I don't know, Dixie replied as he tried to articulate his thoughts. On top of everything else, I'm realizing that watching real life like that just makes me consider just stuff more, you know? In a way I can't explain. I mean, if you really pay attention, you see it. It just feels like struggles of daily life keep getting harder these days. Well, duh, said Chili, so far unfazed. She felt like she was living in a repeating loop. Yeah, but without people even trying to care to make sense of things anymore, Dixie added. You know what I'm saying? We talked about this, Chili tried to interrupt. I don't know if it's the spook stories happening, Dixie continued, or the news no one trusts, or the aliens in Sig Dark. It's not aliens already, Chili Sue interrupted. Enough with that. I, I keep getting these, this feeling everybody's efforts are misguided more and more, Dixie continued. Yeah, I feel like I figured it out. Chili looked curiously at her friend. Figured out what, she asked. Figured out what people should have figured out years ago? We don't live in a parallel universe, dude. It was all a myth. When he explained this thought to her, she just shook her head and grinned. I'm pretty sure we've already talked about this. Just let it go. Well, I don't know, Dixie continued. How do I say it? Feels like the crap of daily life goes on, but like I said, I meet so few people who give a crap to make sense of the confusion of it all, and then can really make sense of it, even though it's all so... But his voice trailed off in thought. And you do? You can make sense of it? Well, we're having a conversation of trying to make sense of things right now, aren't we? He replied back. Yeah, I guess, she shrugged. Last Friday, I guess I was feeling like this, she continued, before I caught myself. You were working, I went out, I tried to start a conversation just like this with Guffin and the Babayan brothers as the spoiled sport, but they just gave me a blank stare. Yeah, those guys were probably your best bet, he smirked. Yeah, nobody to talk to, I guess, when you really want to make sense of things in your head, she muttered. And with a grimace, she looked at him thoughtfully while he set up his blocks. It's nice feeling misunderstood, isn't it? Dixie said to her with a smile without staring at her. Guffin and Dave, in particular, call me a killjoy, Chili continued. But they complain half the time about the daily grind in their lives. Mike thinks like you, Dixie reminded her. I'm surprised he gave you a blank stare. He loves thinking about this kind of crap. I know, but he's sometimes too deep in thought. Overbearing sometimes. I know I really shouldn't complain. I just wish I could figure out exactly what else is bugging me, Dixie continued as he successfully tried to change the subject now. Maybe that's why my brain's starting to short out. What do you mean? Chili asked. There was something in that sidelong look he just gave her that made her wonder. No, it's just that I was thinking of how I used to get excited about going out with their crew some of the time. 
But as nice as hanging out with those knuckleheads are, this whole stressed about the future crap. All right, it's starting to get to me, you know? What, the current events? The issues of the day? She inquired. No, yes, but but no, no. I mean, I mean our very lives in the next couple of years, he tried to explain to her. Look, I really don't want to whine. I don't want to be one of those guys. He seemed particularly dejected, and she didn't like how he seemed to be putting on a brave face. Well, you already know how I feel, Chili said to him, consolingly. Remember, my family keeps bugging me about transferring to a better school or deciding some sort of career move soon. As if I'm supposed to have it all figured out now. It's, it's insane seeing how it's almost like perspective was given to them when they were kids. I, oh, I, it's hard to explain. She picked up the tennis ball laying on the floor and started bouncing it against the wall. And as she seemed to be working out stuff in her mind, she bounced the ball more and more vigorously. Yeah, everybody is in a damn rush these days, and there's still no point. She let her mm -hmm. mind get away with her free association. Yeah, nothing good seems to come out of the grind. Dixie simply nodded as he built another building. What could he say? Yeah, you think it could have been better in some parallel universe? He asked her after a while. <laughs> there you go again with that, Chili grunted. I mean, yeah, I guess chores need to be done, but nobody I know ever seems to have time to fully relax, you know? Dixie grinned at the complete irony to all this. Everybody Around them. looked like they were relaxing. Hell, they themselves appeared to be relaxing right now, but not really. He hated feeling guilty like there was something wrong with them for enjoying the afternoon like the way they were doing right now, instead of having to spend their whole time worrying about the future. Or spend their time as should be expected studying for that stupid math test they didn't care about just so they could move ahead in life. Correction. Make their friends and family happy even though in the end nobody seemed to care either way what ultimately happened to him in Chile. And yet, everything around them seemed to radiate being happy people. Everybody happy, but seemingly people like him in Chile. The losers. The losers and slackers who their own friends would poke fun of and remind them they lacked motivation in their lives. For a few seconds, Dixie was conscious of these revelations, but the thoughts never got translated as proper words to digest them. And soon the palpability of these revelations faded like a wisp of gas. Chili Sue kept bouncing the ball restlessly. You know, like you, I wish a more lighthearted side of me was all I knew. Just like you do, she confessed. Dixie agreed with a grin. I Actually, I, I had this thought I wanted to, to tell you, she said before he could finish his thought. But somewhere more fitting where we could really talk. What's wrong with my room? Dixie could sense it and turn it with his friend. She didn't want to say anything just yet. Oh, okay, come on, what? He insisted. It can wait, she replied back. Come on already, Dixie insisted. All right, fine, said Chili. Now that we're on the subject, I don't want to live here anymore either. Dixie looked up. What do you mean? Chili shrugged but had a strange look in her eyes. Then she told him something rather insightful and unexpected. Yeah, Chili continued. I think I know what you're trying to say right now. Or maybe just this last month, I don't know. I feel it too. Ultimately, I have no desire to live in the same boring mode most of my family seems to be living in. I really do wish your Uncle Kurt was right, she continued. And it could have been different. Like there was some sort of a parallel universe to all this. I'm really starting to make up my mind. I, I really don't... I, I really do just want to get out of here. You mean out of this town, you mean, he asked her. I'm guessing your mom's giving you beef again, right? Chili's eyes sunk with weariness, frustration, and despair at the same time. She just simply nodded. But after a few glimpses of tossing the ball, she articulated her thoughts much better. Maybe we should just go for a walk or something. No, no, no. Just w what's on your mind? He inquired. I just feel misunderstood, dude. All the time, she said after a bit. Family barbecues and pretending that everybody and everything is so rosy. And I don't even know what's wrong with me. If this is being an adult, I, I want, want no, no part, part of, it. of it. They both said at the same time. And Chili grinned. 
Yeah, my dad says resilience builds maturity, Dixie said with a frustrated smirk, and that I don't have much. But just accepting a stupid way to exist without questioning it can't be right either. I just don't want to work 60 hours like they're both working. Not having time for anything they wish they... Yeah, I don't know. Great, said Chili Sue. She now felt just as gloomy as Dixie. All this self-inducing bad habit of making themselves depressed. She kind of wished they could both figure out how to get out of these mental ruts in their head. Maybe he just shouldn't talk at all. You're right. We're better off when we don't think too much, she said to him. We need to go to Crow Hill. Probably soon. Some fresh air might be a good idea, Dixie agreed. Crow Hill was a 200-foot cliff west of the city that proved a beautiful place to just stare at the countryside, and it provided an amazing view of the entire city. And it was her little fortress of solitude. It was the best place by far to clear their heads. It, sh it shouldn't feel this reckless, Chili admitted. Are we really being super dramatic again? Are the Babayan brothers right? Look, I like Mike, but I wouldn't hold much weight on ridicule coming from two twins who've got their own issues. Especially Dale, Dixie reassured her. He shook his head as if to get rid of the rocks rolling around in his head. He started to chuckle. We're not so unique thinking like this, you know. You think we're the first people that have ever pondered this stuff? He stared at his toy buildings and his eyes relaxed. I guess it doesn't matter. Something to do, he said indifferently. That was that. A trip to Crow Hill was certainly in order. But Chili already had a real problem. Deep down, she knew that part of the problem was that she kept letting herself get distracted with these existential problems instead of solving the one monkey she wished was immediately off her back right now studying for that stupid algebra test. She had to smile at her own psychology for distracting her with some noble pathway to enlightenment just to get out of chores, and she figured Dixie was going through the same routine of denial she was going through right now. You know, we really do let ourselves get too negative for the dumbest reasons. You do know that, she said to Dixie. Maybe after the first couple hundred times of reliving this, we'll finally learn. For a few minutes, Dixie was completely stiff and silent and continued to set up his toy building. I'm not ashamed of being philosophically reasoned. Confession, though. All this we're talking about, that's not the thing that's really disturbing me. It's been that bad the last couple of days, actually. That, that's the thing. What are you talking about? Chili asked him. You're upset about something else? His eyes looked especially troubled right now. Yeah. You do seem more jaded than normal, she mused. I thought talking through this crap would help. You get it out of your system. I'm jaded. No, I'm fine. Don't go to extremes, Dixie said right back. But then he relented and let his face relax. It was a mixture of uncertainty and anxiety. The look was actually unexpected, and, and it alarmed Chili. What is it really? She asked with concern. He told her to take a look at his car parked outside the driveway. I'm sorry, what about it? She asked him. I walked right by it. When Chili Sue returned to his room, all she could say was, I have no words. I'm sorry. And Dixie nodded. She wanted to give him a hug, but he seemed aloof for the time being. After a few seconds, they resumed their activities as there was nothing else to say about the matter. Why didn't you just tell me when you walked in? She finally asked. I didn't want you to feel as bad as I'm feeling right now, he said with a struggle. I mean, I know you've been sort of bummed lately yourself, and I figured sooner or later you'd see it. It's not like any of us can do anything about any of this right now. All this crap happening, you know? Chili knew exactly what he meant by that, and she put her head down, struggling to keep her eyes dry. She leaked out a compassionate smile. She couldn't help but admire his desire to keep her from further stress. But then Dixie quickly added, Maybe I didn't want to think about this any more than I need to right now, okay? Life's been taking a turn for the surreal. Chili started to chuckle darkly. Guess you're right. But now, how is this different than any other day, she reasoned. Dixie smirked as well. What an enigma Dixie was. Looking at his face right now, there appeared to be even something else he was not telling her. She studied his face. It went from suffering victim to shame and indignance at the same time. 
Immediately she knew. Wait a minute. This isn't just about the car, she cried. You did lose your job at Bonehead's Pizza, didn't you? I knew it. I figured it, when you... You just said you you would quit. I, I, I even told you... Damn it, Dixie. Dixie smiled and shrugged. Well, I'm not fired yet, technically. They're considering... I told you it was going to happen, and Chili cried. I figured if I made you feel bad about the car first, you'd leave me alone about that, Dixie defended himself. And I told you you should stop showing up 15 minutes late every shift, Ch Chili yelled at him. Talk about everything piling up on a bad day. Hey, I tried to call in. I said I had to study for the algebra exam on Friday, and I wasn't 15 minutes late this time, all right? Well, then how late were you then? Chili countered. She knew him too well. 45 minutes, Saturday. 30 yesterday, and then I showed up semi-late today, and they gave me sort of the pink slip. Chili threw her hands up in the air, and Dixie's eyes sued for mercy. He had the worst approach to be taken seriously, but something in his eyes still had the most bewildered look in them. But seriously, it gets worse, actually. Chili flung her backside on Dixie's bed as she slapped her forehead and rubbed her face. I don't know when I should actually feel bad for you. You're nuts, she explained. I'm guessing the car was your fault, too. Something a little more disturbing than that, Dixie said, in all seriousness, as he put down his toys and looked at her. Chili, something's happened to me. All day I seem to be having these strange flashbacks or something. Well, not flashbacks. It's as if I'm starting to dream with my eyes open. There was something unsettling about the way he said it that made Chili Sue wince a bit. You mean like visions? She asked cautiously, through her hands while still rubbing her face. Yeah. It's like I s I'm seeing these random visions of events happening right in front of my eyes, Dixie tried to explain. That's weird, Chili Sue remarked. When exactly did it start? Yesterday, maybe one o'clock, and then last night, and then today twice. First time... Just after I got thrown out of Bonehead's Pizza, I was in the parking lot. Then on the road. Chili Sue couldn't believe what she was hearing. You're serious. Dixie nodded reluctantly. But I'm telling you, I can see visions of things happening in front of me as if my eyes were closed, he went on. But they're not closed, and I'm not crazy. This isn't like I'm daydreaming here. Look, all I know is that when I wake up, I've just remained in this state of delirium. Dixie started flinging some laundry nervously across the room while Chili let him continue. You know, I already have these, this wacky imagination. I don't know how to fully describe it. But these flashbacks are visions of things, and my brain are quite real. How messed up is that? Sounds rough, Chili Sue consoled him. Chili, I crashed the car because I actually saw visions of a tunnel somewhere where I was waiting in the green fog. I felt the mist. I, I felt it. And then this other thing is if I could see it. These things were surrounding a pole. That does sound weird, Chili admitted, while trying not to show more concern than seemed needed. Maybe you're just overtired. O overtired, Dixie countered dismissively. If anything, I've been sleeping a lot more than before, especially last night. Yeah, but you've been through some trauma, suggested Chili. Last night before bed, I was just standing there. Eyes were wide open, he said to her. And suddenly I saw humanoid plant-like creatures I'd never seen before that looked like aloe plants playing Red Rover, but playing like they were actually like fighting a battle or something. Chili Zoo's concern grew. You're not making any sense. I know, I know, Dick said. Why are you being so overdramatic? Chili asked him in an effort to calm him down. Like you said... You've already got a whacked imagination. You probably hit the wall with all this stress and must have been dreaming. I'm not so sure, Dixie replied as he threw up his hands. This whole situation would have been laughable if his life wasn't such a mess. No, may maybe it's a coincidence this afternoon I saw visions while driving, but I was definitely not asleep, Dixie insisted. 
Something really must be in the air. That's the only way I can explain it. Dixie walked up to the window to look outside as if with half curiosity. Chili could see where this was going now. Dixie had a way of coming up with whacked out conspiracy theories his imagination could use as an excuse to explain his shortcomings. Maybe this is good, Dixie added after a while. Like something Einstein experienced, right? What are you talking about? asked Chili. Like something Einstein experienced maybe in his head when he discovered relativity. You sound like you're truly tripping on something right now, said Chili. <laughs> Did someone lace your lunch with mushrooms? But Dixie ignored her as he kept speculating. For a few minutes, Dixie tried to reason what was going on in his head, while the more Chili listened to him, the more she egged him to go see a doctor. But he was no psychologist, and soon his own speculations on what was going on started to get carried away. He appeared surprisingly cheerful, suddenly despite his solemn mood earlier. Yeah, maybe Einstein had similar visions due to some jolting experience he used to himself. You're not turning into a genius, genius, Chili replied. Yeah, but then one day maybe a brick hit him, Dixie went on, thinking to himself, out loud. A brick hit him on the head and he gave him amnesia and he forgot all about it. Maybe the relativity discovery was all he had left. What in the world? remarked Chili Sue. All sympathy aside, acting like this is why no one takes you seriously, she said to him as she put her hand on his shoulder, and he stood still as stone and continued to look out the bedroom window, despite. Then he looked around, blocks and toy cars strewn about his feet. Chili studied his face for a clue, but could not remember ever seeing him this earnest about anything since admitting his fear of being in crowded parking lots. You're serious, then? That's what you're telling me? Chili asked him. Yes! He cried as he turned and looked her in the eye. I'm serious. Wait. Wait a minute. Going back to getting fired from Bonehead's Pizza. I didn't get fired. Do your parents know about that? She continued quietly. No, not yet, Dixie muttered. Because I'm not technically fired. Yeah, yet, she scoffed. And they obviously don't know about the car. Your parents, I mean. And on top of that, you still haven't studied anything for this stupid exam, she pondered. The constant reminder of the algebra exam coming up on Friday wasn't comforting. Dixie wished he had the skills to not just worry about this math responsibility, but, but just so much more. But every time a bunch of numbers were thrown in front of him, it seemed like he was reading hieroglyphs. I'll study tonight, he declared. Look, forget everything else. We can bring our books to the spoiled sport and study there. How about I meet you in two hours? I'd like to go to Crow Hill and map out your brain more, she confessed. But that's probably a good idea. As I headed downstairs to raid the fridge, Chili Sue let the intense conversation she had just had filter in her head. Maybe you really should go see a doctor, she said, as she helped herself to a cup of juice. That sounded like a concussion you might have had. You know how I feel about doctors, Dixie barked back. Hell, you know how you feel about them. Chili's heart rate went up at those words. What a stupid place they lived in. No faith in the scamming medical industry here. The news. No faith in pretty much people in general. Sorry, said Dixie. He forgot how sensitive that topic was. You staying for dinner? Chili Sue shook her head. I would if your mom's making quiche. Forget it, never mind. My parents asked me to dine here with them tonight. She did agree to regroup with them tonight, though and crank some study, but deep down she wanted to know more about what was going on in the head of her crazy friend.